Hello everyone from New York City. I'm here with my dear friend, Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez, who's gonna share some amazing information with us. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Yes, absolutely. Hello everyone. I'm an internal medicine resident here in New York City, and I've been studying about benefits of a whole foods plant-based diet for more than 15 years now. Adopting a whole foods plant-based diet can change the future of public health. So hopefully this video will bring awareness that a whole foods plant-based diet is the way to go. Yes, the theme for this video is dairy, as you saw in the title. So one of the main food groups for me growing up was dairy. Cheese, milk, yogurt, and I thought that I needed it to be healthy, to get calcium, and to have strong bones. But then I learned some facts and myths about dairy. I adopted a plant-based diet. I saw amazing benefits and I stopped consuming them. Mm -hmm. Let's make something absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. Calcium is needed yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. If you really want to have strong bones, calcium is needed. There's no question about it. The question is, do we need to get calcium through dairy? There have been studies that show when kids eat a lot of dairy during infancy, they tend to have a stronger bone mass during adulthood. For many years, this was the medical rule for everyone. All doctors were trained this way. If you want to have your patients to have strong bones, you have to promote dairy consumption. As you know, Joanna, science progresses. We started to see in observational studies that really people who were very, very hard milk drinkers were not having less fractures than mm -hmm. non milk wow. drinkers, right? So we started to question this whole theory behind dairy as needed for strong bone. We have one study, it was done in Sweden. Yes. It was an observational study, prospective study. That means that these researchers took 100,000 people mm -hmm. and they gave them questionnaires to fill us to how much milk do they drink. And they followed them for 20 years. By the end of those 20 years, what we found is that the women who drank three glasses of milk or more were more likely to die prematurely. They were more likely to suffer certain types of cancer. Oddly enough, they were more likely to suffer from hip fractures. The same was for men. The only difference was that men did not have a higher incidence of hip fractures. This really is yes. telling us something, right? Yes. Calcium is absolutely needed. Yes. But when you adopt a whole foods plant-based diet, composed by green leaves, yes. by fruits, mm -hmm. by vegetables, by whole grains, by legumes, you're actually promoting the consumption of good amount of calcium, which will cause that your bones grow stronger. Now, you don't need only calcium to grow strong bones. Mm -hmm. You also need protein. Yes. You need vitamin D, which means sunshine. You need exercise. In a short story, calcium can be obtained through plants. Whole foods, not processed foods, exactly. because there's a lot of vegan processed foods just cooking your house and you'll be getting the calcium that you need, eating a variety of fruits and vegetables. Absolutely, and don't forget to expose to sunshine, do some strength exercises, drink plenty of water, mm -hmm. okay? And if you live in an area of the world where sunshine is not enough, Yes. you should take a supplement of vitamin D. What is another problem we can face by eating too much dairy? Higher consumption of saturated fat is linked to a myriad of diseases. Yes. It's linked to atherosclerosis, which is the deposition of fat within mm -hmm. our arteries in our mm -hmm. heart and throughout our body, diabetes. Okay. It has been linked to certain types of cancer, even to lower sperm counts. What is the number one food that provides saturated fat within the American diet, dairy? For many years, we had these studies that show that people that didn't drink milk didn't have the so-called saturated fat-related diseases. But then, wow. researchers looked hard at the evidence and they saw that the people who were not drinking milk were having cheese and butter. Wow. So you really see a good result in your yes. health when you remove all of it and the high amounts of saturated fat that Absolutely. these food groups contain. And there's so many substitutes, plant-based milks and yogurts and cheeses, so you don't have to sacrifice the taste or the texture. You don't have to at sacrifice all. that at all. Now, so eating saturated fat is unavoidable. Uh -huh. There is saturated fat 
in walnuts, pistachios, almonds, there's saturated fat everywhere because it's part of the kingdom, exactly. right? However, it's the higher consumption that you want to avoid. You don't want too much of the bad stuff and too little of the good stuff. When you eat avocados, when you eat olives, when you eat almonds, you're eating higher amounts of morning saturated fats, which are actually good. Right? Okay. They actually protect it. Mm -hmm. And less amount of saturated fat. One of the benefits I encountered when adopting a plant-based diet was that my digestion really improved. Does mm -hmm. dairy have anything to do with it? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Since 1950s, we have reports in yeah. medical journals that show that kids with severe constipation, kids who would not go to the bathroom, who would not have a bowel movement for weeks, would improve tremendously if all dairy would be removed from their diet. But these were only small reports published in very, very isolated medical journals. Mm -hmm. Everything moves forward, the science moved forward. So we have great evidence that shows that when we have kids with severe constipation and we switch them from cow's milk to soy milk, they start having bowel movements within weeks. Amazing. It's completely amazing because you can actually cure these severe condition that these poor kids have and just by removing dairy. One of also of my favorite studies, a group of researchers took kids with hypersensitivity to dairy and they took biopsies. Biopsies are like samples of a, with a needle, they go to the damaged organ, in this mm -hmm. case the colon of these kids. They could show that the colons of these kids were inflamed, they were severely damaged and when they switched them to a non-dairy diet, those things wow. change completely. Removing dairy is just one step. As you've been teaching people for a long time yes. we need to go to a diet that has more water more fiber exactly. and exercise yes. what definitely is a great step to take one of the benefits I noticed was in my skin when I adopt a plant-based diet mm -hmm. and so can you tell us a little bit about that when we eat dairy substances that this product has turn on genes that promote the growth of sebaceous glands within our wow. face. So these sebaceous glands, what they do, they produce sweat. So when you overproduce sweat, it obviously tends to get a fatty skin, it tends to get infected more mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. So that's when acne can emerge. By removing dairy, mm -hmm. you would stop this promotion of creation or these glands that promote sweat. So that's a great step if you want to have a youthful drier looking skin. Thank you so much Mauricio for sharing this valuable information with all of us and thank you for watching this video and you can check out Dr. Mauricio at his Instagram and Facebook Dr. Mauricio Gonzalez and I'll leave all the links below so you guys can go follow him and give him some likes and also like this video if you guys liked it and you guys like this information it lets me know that you guys like these kinds of videos and share it promote this truth together about dairy. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye. See you Bye. in the next video.